Whoa there, Edna. Calm down. I know you're not a fan of the little ones, but that was uncalled for. Sorry about that, kids. All right, I think I have a story or two in me. Out here in the West, most places have some form of law enforcement. Whether it's an army of Securitrons, a few men and women with badges, or a hard-working sheriff. In the East, the capital wasteland doesn't have much government. Each little town has its own law. Most of them hire a mercenary to help keep the peace, but sometimes that isn't enough and folk have to take the law into their own hands. As far back as 400 years ago, the dime novels and comic books told tales of masked vigilantes who fought for justice and righted wrongs. Eventually, it wasn't enough for these fictional characters to wear a mask. These superheroes needed crazy costumes and superhuman powers to fight crime. The superheroes fell out of favor over time, replaced by tales of barbarians, spacemen, and heroic soldiers. But companies like Hubris Comics kept printing the funny books until Armageddon came. Among the Hubris lineup was Grognak the Barbarian. Grognak. Modern readers know Grognak is a source of handy tips on sword fighting, but if you look past the action scenes, there are some good stories and characters hidden between the ads for X-ray glasses. One of his old enemies was the antagonizer, a femme fatale who commanded an army of ants. And hundreds of years after that issue was published, a young girl in the town of Canterbury Commons must have come across that very book and taken it to heart. The citizens of Canterbury Commons liked to tell her tale to caravans who passed through the town, and there was an enclave outpost not too far away that captured video footage of her on occasion. Hers was a tale of sorrow. When Tanya Kristoff was just a girl, her parents were killed before her eyes by giant ants. While many people would have vowed vengeance against the six-legged creatures, Tanya realized that she had been spared. Nay, she had been chosen. She turned her back on humanity, seeking solace in the welcoming embrace of the ants. Humans are unpredictable, ungovernable, and most of all, self-destructive. But among the ants, she found her rightful place as queen. It might have been a mutation or advanced technology that allowed her to control them, but I suspect it was an act of sheer willpower. Once she had an army at her command, she created a suit of ant armor and dubbed herself the Ant Agonizer. With high hopes and the relentless determination of an ant, she began her assault on humanity, starting with the people of Canterbury Commons in 2277. Giant ants can be pesky, but they're hardly able to outmatch a couple of well-armed mercs like the town had. And with the ant agonizer, always screaming melodramatic monologues, the townsfolk could hear her coming and get the drop on her bugs when they showed up. Despite her theatrics, she turned out to be more of an oddity than a menace. The trader caravans even considered her to be a source of entertainment, and the townsfolk had something to break up the monotony of their days. But one man had enough of her villainous antics. A hero chose to fight back against the Formic Felon. When Scott Walensky saw his fair city under siege by a nefarious temptress and her arthropod army, he assumed the mantle of the Mechanist. With his robot sidekicks, the Mechanist waged a never-ending crusade to defend the good people of Canterbury Commons against the creeping henchbugs of the Antagonizer. But alas, the epic battles threatened to annihilate the very townsfolk that he fought to defend. The ants weren't so bad by themselves, but when the Mechanist added in a bunch of robots firing lasers up and down Main Street, well, things started to escalate. They would fight to a standstill almost every time, and the antagonizer would run away, screaming, You haven't seen the last of me, Mechanist! The townsfolk tried to get rid of them for months, but no one could find their secret lairs. And the last time I was out east, they were still at it, disrupting the trade caravans that passed by the town. Both of them were just too proud to back down. I wouldn't sacrifice their superhuman identities. 
even for the common good. That's a shame, too. There are plenty of towns out there that could use a superhero. Places like New Reno, for instance. That's a place so full of sin and vice, you could trade a comic book for 15 minutes of... <clears throat> but that's a story for another day. <laughs>